What's up? Welcome Bushwick to all our viewers and listeners everywhere. We are excited to welcome you all to our very first podcast, That's a Fact. My name is Jay Styles, and I'm accompanied by the two best co-hosts anyone could ask for, my boys, Hendo and Andy. That's what That's all right. What's going on in York? I hope you're having a, a great Saturday night. We started this podcast called That's a Fact to give Bushwick a voice and to highlight positive news in our communities. We're just three friends who grew up in Bushwick and still have neighborhood, and we still have ties to the neighborhood that we love and care, care so deep for. We want, we want to share our experience while featuring guests, musicians, artists, and community leaders. We have five episodes planned for you, and we just want, to, uh, want, want you guys to have a good time. That's a fact. What's up, bro? Mm-hmm. We have a fun-filled show for you today in honor of Black History Month. We will be talking to two special guests. We also will cover current events, music, politics, and entertainment. And we'll talk to our very special guest, Councilman Rafael Espinal, a candidate for New York City Public Advocate. That's right. And during our interview portion, we'll be talking to Spud Brooklyn, a media mogul and community activist who grew up in Bushwick. And also to Nehemiah Marcos, a writer, comedian, and entrepreneurial baker. Our show today is sponsored by Taino Body Scrub, moisturized and soaking an all homemade, all natural body product. Check them out online at Taino Body NYC. This company was started by one of our hosts, Andy. Yo, that's dope, Andy. Our two guests today are leaders in the African-American community in Brooklyn and beyond. Spud Brooklyn is a media molder and community activist. During the day, Spud helps artists perfect their craft and clean their image. By night, Spud is a community activist helping those who have faced criminal justice system. Nehemiah Marcos is one of the communities of the duo group called Never Sad, an improv skit group. He's also the founder of his own baking company called Black Hand Bakery. And he's also a contributing writer to the New Yorker magazine. For the first part of our show, we will cover current events. For this segment, we have Consumer Rafael Espinal, candidate for the New York City Public Advocate race in the special election held uh, this uh, February 26th. We want to know what our listeners think about this and all the topics featured tonight. So listeners, any questions, opinions you may have on anything we talk about today, feel free to hit us up on our YouTube or Instagram page or our Facebook page, That's a Fact NYC. We would love to hear from all of you about uh, but remember to always make sure you're Jay. Make sure that's a fact. Our first guest grew up in New York, East New York, and now wants to represent you in the Public Advocate Office. Welcome, Councilman. Thank you, guys. Pleasure being here. Okay, Mr. Espinal currently represents Bushwick, East New York, and parts of bed and Brownsville. He's a candidate for Public Advocate, a citywide elected position during a special election that will be held on Tuesday, February 26th. Thank you so much, Thank you so much Councilman, for being our first guest on the show. That's a fact. I know you're a long-time Brooklyn resident, so can you tell us about your favorite bars or restaurants you like to hang out in Bushwick? I am from Brooklyn, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my favorite bars and restaurants to hang out at, I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, you know, I, I, you know I, I grew up in East New York. It, it was never a, a safe place to be. It was never a safe place to hang out. Uh, and I, was, I envisioned my entire life wanting to leave the neighborhood to go somewhere safer, right? And like better to be able to have a better, you know, a better chance and opportunities that are out there. Uh, so I actually, the first bar I went to when I was 21 years old, this bar called Zablowski's in Williamsburg. And it was just, you know, they had a pool table, they had a dartboard, they had pinball machines, and it was a kind of like a cool little place. Uh, to go and drink some beers, so I would say that's my favorite bar right now. It's not in Bushwick. Uh, if it has to be Bushwick, I think right now it would, it would probably be Industry, uh, Halsey Street. Yeah. It's a cool little place. You yeah, know, definitely. I think it has a lot of flavor, um, a lot of good food, and yeah, it's a cool place to hang out. Okay. Um, can you tell me what's the role of a public advocate? Yeah, so the public advocate is actually that, is to advocate for you, the public, and hold the mayor and the city council accountable. Uh, on the issues, right? So if there are laws being passed, initiatives that are not working for our communities, uh, my job is to like be the bully and, and push push the city to do the right thing by our communities. Uh, the public advocate also has the power to introduce legislation, meaning that can pass laws. 
um, you know, something you can do as a council member, but as a public mm -hmm. advocate, since you're representing the entire city, uh, you have more influence over the process. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you believe qualifies you to you know, for the position? Me personally, I, I would say that I'm the only candidate that actually grew up in, in you know, in in, in, in the hood. I would say, for lack of better words, <laughs> um, and I, you know, I think I, I understand the struggles that you know working class families have of uh, trying to raise a family, uh, dealing with the pressures of, of the cost of living, uh, dealing with in dealing with communities that need more investments in our schools, and I think that those pressures that I saw in my community we're seeing across the entire city only because it continues to get more and more expensive to live here, right? Like, it, you know, to get to get a decent apartment, pay $2,000, you know, it's crazy. When I was growing up, a, a, an apartment was $800, yeah. and that was considered affordable at the time. So there are more and more New Yorkers who, who are feeling what we felt uh, when we were growing up because of how expensive it is. And, you know, I, I think that my experience of understanding what that feels like and, and understanding what, what it feels like to, not to have the city doing the right thing by us, I, I think that uh, the public advocate role is an important role to have someone that can that can lead by experience. So that's, 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 that's a good, good answer. Thank you, Councilman, for being on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, so we read your plan about funding NYCHA and the MTA, and we, we kind of like it a little bit. Uh, can you a just give bit? us some <laughs> details about what, what your plan to end the Stock Transfer Act is about? What does that mean? Yeah, um, I, I know it sounds complicated. It took yeah. me a few days to figure it out myself personally. Uh, but actually, it, it's, it's uh, there's a stock transfer tax. And what that means is, Every time uh, a Wall Street broker buys stocks, um, he has to pay taxes. But at the end of the year, for some reason, the state returns all his taxes back to us. It's like us working. Uh, you know, we all pay taxes on our paycheck. And at the end of the year, somehow, miraculously, because we fill out paperwork, the city and state returns all our taxes back. It's like a free, it's like free, you know, giveaway. So there's eleven billion dollars that the city and state collect in taxes from Wall Street, and then they give it back to them right away as soon as, as, soon as they pull out the, the paperwork. So my idea is that let's stop giving the money back to them. Let's hold on to the money. It's not right, right? Uh, let's hold on to the money. Let's spend it to fix NYCHA and let's spend it to fix the MTA. That's a That's big plan. plan. So the federal government, New York City, just made an agreement for NYCHA. Can you give us some details? Will we stand about that? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's first and foremost, I would say that I think it's embarrassing that we had to have Donald Trump say that he's going to come into New York and save NYCHA. Yeah. You know, out of all people. Exactly. I mean, that, that sets a tone already in itself. Uh, it just shows that there has been a lack of leadership. And you can't just blame the mayor of today, the mayors of the past and the governors of the past, and those today as well, who did not make the right investments in, into into our public housing uh, system. So I would say, you know, adding adding a federal monitor is just another level of bureaucracy, right? There's more people who are going to say they'll do more and more paperwork. They're really probably not going to be nothing. Uh, we should be taxing Wall Street, getting real money uh, back into the system. And that's why I think my plan is probably the better plan. So I we saw you in the debate, and you asked uh, Viverito about uh, the, uh, the, the NYCHA situation, and she kind of gave you a little... Uh, punch back, but she didn't get to respond. So what would have you said back to her? I was telling her Google NYCHA boilers. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then Google became a hit. Google yeah. NYCHA boilers. Like, everybody was talking about NYCHA boilers. Yeah, like, I mean, but I think what I was trying to say, um, you know, and she cut me off. What I was saying mm -hmm. is um, that there are people in power who had the opportunity to do the right thing and make the right investments. Uh, and we have to stop electing the same people because these same people are responsible for a lot of what's happening. And I would, and when when she cut me off, and she kept saying about how she's the one that put nature on the map and the issues on the map, I turned back and I was trying to tell her, like I was the only council member in the entire city council, in the entire city, to take to to allocate money to fix boilers for the NYCHA apartments in my district, and I did that before NYCHA was in the front page. I did it because it was the right thing to do, not because it was a press release or it was a press conference or or I was gonna be covered in the news because of what I did, I just, I just did it. And I stayed quiet, I just did my job. Right. And and the, and the New York Post wrote a story about how the city council has not allocated any money, but I was the only one to do it. Oh, so wow. that's why I was trying to tell everyone, Google it, Google it. <laughs> because the facts are there. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> All right, well, we know your main platform is about the environment. So can you tell us uh, why that's important to you? Um, I think it's important to me. I think it should be more important to, especially us people of color, uh, I know it sounds like, a, like an issue that doesn't affect us, but it really does, actually, for many reasons. Uh, when you think about asthma, how many people have asthma in our communities? When you think about cancer, 
a cancer risk in our community. That has, has to happen. That, that's because um, the city and the state dumped all of like the toxic, whatever it be, sanitation mm -hmm. in our communities, whether it be uh, air quality, all the trucks that come into our neighborhoods. You know, and we we should be doing more to change that, right? Like, if if we put a, we create a greener New York City, uh, that means that there will be less kids with asthma, there will be less cancer rates in our communities, and as people of color, we're the ones that get left behind these conversations because if you do go to Park Slope, you know, anytime there's any conversation of uh, some sort of like uh, environmental issue going on in the district, whether it be putting a sanitation truck uh, depot in their neighborhood, they're gonna they're gonna turn back around and start protesting. Mm -hmm. Our communities don't. And we're 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 the ones that are actually taking the brunt of all these all these issues. So it's an important issue to talk about. And I think also on a broader level, yeah, the, the planet is suffering. Um, you know, we live in a we live in a, in a coastal city. Uh, we saw what happened in Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have more of those storms, and we have to do more to to make sure that that we're playing we're doing right by the environment. Uh, great. Uh, great. Very well said. So, Councilman, we originally wanted to ask you about the Amazon deal about coming to New York, mm -hmm. but that since. Uh, we've spoken. It's changed, right? Amazon has pulled yeah. out of the, out of, the uh, uh, out of New York City. So, any comments about that? And then, any response to some local business concerns about Amazon pulling out? What would you be? What would be yeah. your response to those business owners? I mean, so two years ago, the mayor and the governor called every single council member and state official to sign on to a letter urging Amazon to come. The letter literally said, "Dear Mr. Bezos." We, as a body of New York City, urge you to move your headquarters into New York City because we're the best city. We offer the best amenities for uh, opportunities for for your company to be here. Uh, I did not sign on to that letter uh, because I, by the time I hit my desk, I already had issues with Amazon. Amazon is responsible for a lot of our small mom and pops closing their doors. Uh, Amazon is becoming a behemoth of a company that's trying to monopolize the entire retail uh, industry. Uh, and we had to be. We, I, I believe that we, we, as a city of New York. Who, who celebrates the diversity of our small businesses, that we shouldn't be signing a letter asking for this company to come into New York. If they want to come here, come here. We shouldn't be giving our money to them or our tax, our tax base that we come into our city. So long before this whole thing blew up, I was already against it. Uh, and then when it blew up, um, it blew up after, the, after a deal was already cut between Amazon and the mayor and the governor. But Amazon clearly did not want to make the right investments in our city because once they were being pushed to unionize, once they were being pushed to make the right investments, that's when they decided to pull out. So, you know, uh, things turned out the way they did. People will blame the activists, but I blame Amazon for not wanting to play ball with the city of New York. Yeah. The right way. Yeah, yeah. So, you don't know, think the city plays a bigger role in promoting the future success of LSE? The city plays a big role, I think, in everyone's success, right? And it's about making the investments in the right neighborhoods. Um, for example, in, in East New York, I was able to secure you know a quarter of a billion dollars to build East New York's first community center, uh, to, be, to invest in our schools, to build a new school in my district. And I wondered to myself, why, why, why didn't do this in the past? Why can't we make these investments in our neighborhood? Why can't we create real plans of how we're going to? Uh, you know, uplift communities and, and give everybody uh, an equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. the, op the, the, the possibility is there, um, but the city's not doing it. Uh, that's why I'm running for public advocate as well. Okay. Um, before I, uh, I have one more question. Um, where do you stand on CBD oil? <laughs> uh, I think it should be legal. <laughs> uh, the city cracked down on all the restaurants and all the, all right. the coffee shops that, that mm -hmm. provide CBD oil in their food and stuff. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, there's something else behind it. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of reactionary. Right. Uh, it's been around for a while, and they decided to just wake up overnight and say it's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know, I, I challenge the city and ask them, you know, what is the reason they decided to, to take a stance? Okay. What's your drink of choice? Like when you go to one of these bars, like what <laughs> um, so recommend the at, at the yeah. What do you recommend in the industry? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, that's a hard question. It depends on the mood, right? Um, a shot of whiskey and a beer. <laughs> Easy. You got it going. Oh, margarita. I like a margarita. That's good, too. Um, yeah, a margarita or a shot of whiskey and a beer. All right, shot of whiskey and a beer. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you <laughs> so much, Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Being on the show. We appreciate you. Good luck on your election, February 26th. And if you uh, have any final words for our viewers, uh, now's the time.
No, I mean, I, I would say that it's important for everyone to get involved. There's a big election coming up, and this election is going to change the direction of our city. If you wake up every morning upset, feeling pressure, wondering why your life can't be better, it's because government's not doing enough for you. And we need a public advocate that understands that, and that's going to push the city to make the right investments in our communities. And uh, February 26th, special election. Come out. That's well, important. Let's go. Thanks for coming.